What I'm about to share with you could be so shocking for a lot of you, almost unbelievable, because it goes against the conventional way of what you thought was the main number and the number one risk factor for heart problems, especially if you're over the age of 40. It's to the point where almost shocking, couldn't even tell you, but I'm going to. Okay, right out of the gates to not leave you hanging. That LDL is not the most important number. Your cholesterol is not the most important number when it comes to your heart health. It's Dr. Living Good. I lost my father from heart-related conditions. This whole journey started because of that. Him having his heart shut down at age 51 very suddenly. Lost a grandfather from congestive heart failure. So chances are, and you could comment in the comments below, like a lot of people have, a yes if you had a family member impacted by heart failure or heart disease. In this video, I wanna share with you what the actual biggest risk factor is and one huge recent study that can change everything, but we know how it goes in the medical community. It takes so long to change, but how the risk assessment for heart attacks and strokes could be determined and how you can start understanding if you have any level of a risk today to prevent a heart attack or stroke or heart-related condition 30 years from now, three zero. Now, why am I saying that cholesterol is not the number one risk factor. Well, it comes down to this. I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard to teach you and break down this today because when we look at cholesterol and its importance, every cell in your body has around it a lipid bilayer, this layer around the entire thing protecting it. And what this protects it from is nutrients getting properly in, but then also toxins and waste getting out of every cell in your body. Cholesterol is that layer. So every Every single cell in your body has a lipid bilayer around it. Your brain particularly has an incredible amount of cholesterol and fat around it. That's literally how every cell works. So if you're damaging cells, working, working out, stressing, inflammation that you can feel in your swollen ankles or unrest digestive system or sinuses or pressure or achy joints, damaging cells. If you damage them, what does your body have to do? Make new ones or repair them. And guess what it needs to do that? It needs new cholesterol. So why are we so confused when it comes to cholesterol? And why is that the biggest number that we look at when you go to your doctor to address heart incidences? Well, let me get to cholesterol in a moment, how the body produces it. But traditionally what we've done, and over the last 30 years, there's been significant increases in measuring your level of cholesterol. It all came back to a Farmingham study that showed that cholesterol was higher and that's what led to the incidences of heart attacks and heart disease. Now, when we start to break that down, you'll go into a doctor and they will measure your cholesterol and that's the main basis for where they're going to start you on a statin medication and you're just on the medication for the rest of your life. Comment yes in the comments below if you've been through a scenario like that. Like that's what the doctor recommends, that it's over a certain number and they just give it to you. There is some research. If you start to get above 190 with your LD L, that there is some risk. A lot of it's familial risk though, that there's a genetic predisposition when it's that high that you're having risk for it. So there is research there, but the study was flawed when it came to the number of people of certain age groups and predispositions. And so the scale in our lifetime has now slid that we wanna see numbers under 130. Now in previous teachings I've talked about, the fact that we allowed the scale to slide from we need to be under 190 because there's solid research when you're above it, that LDL does matter, but not as much as we think. And they slid the number of a committee of people that got into a room. Most of the people on the committee were either working for a pharmaceutical company or were getting paid by a pharmaceutical company. And they decided to shift the numbers down to 130 or below, forcing people to be very aggressive with their standard of lowering LDL as low as possible is typically the goal when you go into the doctor's office. I'm not replacing any sort of medical care or knowing your medical history, but is it a good idea to lower this below 130? Well, the FDA recently came out with some black box warnings to show that if you're lowering it with a statin drug below this amount, it can lead to cognitive impairment and increase of type 2 diabetes and other issues with joints like ruptured Achilles. That's literally on the FDA's website. So if you've been down this road and you're frustrated by it, maybe you're not even aware that you have a cholesterol problem. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a cholesterol problem. What do 
we do to help to maintain enough healthy cholesterol and avoid the heart attack risks? Well, that's when it goes back to what I was just referring to a moment ago. So when we look at what cholesterol is doing in the body and how it's made, 75% of the cholesterol in your body is made by you. And your body makes larger molecules of LDL cholesterol, and it makes smaller molecules of LDL cholesterol. Now, this is a big distinction. It also makes HDL and triglycerides, and those all factor into total cholesterol. Now, HDL is often known as the good cholesterol. And so with that, that's part of the healing that's going to take and send, if we have, going back to our example of our damaged cell, HDL is going to take new cholesterol out to the cell and LDL is going to bring back damaged cholesterol from the cell. All of this is made by your liver and your liver is producing 75% of it. 25% of what you do and what you eat adds to this equation. Now let's go back down to our bigs and our smalls. When you have larger LDL cholesterols, you have less chance of having any kind of problems with it because it's functioning very healthy. But when you get too many of the small particle size LDLs, there's an issue. All of that said, if you're having a cholesterol problem, or if that was your primary worry coming into this video, you should be looking at your small particle sizes. But according to recent research, there's actually a number that supersedes everything I just taught you. Everything on this board of how your body's making cholesterol, it's driving HDL, it's bringing back the waste through LDL, triglycerides storing fat molecules in your body. All of that is superseded by one number according to some really interesting recent research. Massachusetts Medical Society did a study looking at 28 thousand apparently healthy women and they followed them for eight years and they looked at their incidences men this applies to you as well for heart attacks strokes coronary artery issues or death from cardiovascular causes. So these are women in their 40s, in their 50s, and they're following them for almost a decade to look at the numbers. 77%, 77% of the incidences that occur, stroke, a heart attack, a coronary artery issue, or a death from a cardiovascular issue occurred when the LDL was below 160. 77% below 160. 46% 46% of the incidences occurred when LDL was below 130. So remember our chart just a minute ago where we're doing the normal ranges. Let's go back to that because I think it will illustrate my point. I'm not even to the main study yet. I'm not even to the main point that I wanna make of the shocking number that you can look at. I'm just breaking down what a lot of people get very focused on. Our chart just said a normal range was lowered to 130 for LDL. And if it's above 190, there's an issue. What they were finding is that even if people are at 160, there is a 77% increase. I got to highlight that. 46% if you were below 130. So if you fell here or here on the line, 70, 46 to 77% chance, 76% chance that you still had a heart attack. So what's missing? What are we seeing? By the way, if you do want to see this, here's my study. And this is looking at that exact research of the 28,000 people that they studied. It's PubMed research. So it's very solid. One of my favorite studies, I have an entire separate video just breaking down that study because in it, they looked at another number. And individuals with this number have a risk. If it's high, you are two to three times more likely to have an incident of a stroke of a heart Heart attack or a heart issue than those with lower amounts of this. So let's take a look at what this study looked at. What they found is that even if your cholesterol and your LDL was high, or if your LDL was low, when this one number was off, your risk went up two to three times more. And what is this number? C R P. When they looked at C R P, when it was up, your risk was up. Even if LDL was high, even if LDL was low. That doesn't mean we completely ignore LDL, but what it does mean is that, according to this chart, when CRP is high, your risk is 
so much greater in the follow-up years and your survival rate goes down further and further and further, the higher the CRP is, the worse it is, regardless if LDL is low or if LDL is high. I'm still not even at the main study that I wanted to show you about how that may impact your life over the next 30 years. If you could find out now that you have a test that could tell you that you have an increased risk of heart attack, cardiovascular incidents, stroke, it costs 12 to $14. And it could tell you if you're gonna have one of those in the next 30 years. Would you wanna know that? Well, that one is CRP. So CRP, C-reactive protein, is a protein that is is made by the liver. It is a protein marker that is made by the liver. This is why I've never taught it this way before. I'm so excited about it because your liver could possibly hold the key to the health of your heart. CRP, C-reactive protein, upregulates adhesions and molecules which stimulate what's called monocytes and T lymphocytes inside of your body. So what it does in your blood vessels, if we look at a cross section here, inside of your blood vessels, CRP is going to impact the increase of monocytes and T lymphocytes. Why does that matter? It creates inflammation and it activates platelets inside your blood cell. That's what helps you clot. Now when platelets start to go up, thrombus formation starts to go up. Our clots start to go up. Why does that matter? Well, now we've got potential blockages starting to happen. C-reactive protein starts this change. Vascular remodeling begins to take place, which is a thickening of the walls inside your blood vessels. And so more CRP, more liver strain, more increase of the inflammation, more increase of the clotting. And then we get something called angiogenesis and it promotes these changes inside of blood vessels and they get more and more restricted until we get to a spot of foam cells. Now foam cells are increased when CRP goes up and they mediate the uptake of LDL. So when CRP is increased, individual cells take in more fat molecules like LDL. And when they can't process the LDL, when your cholesterol is high, when your LDL numbers are high, they are stored in what is called a foam cell. Macrophages, white blood cells, they protect the body, they're immune protectors. They form lipids that accumulate in excess in these macrophages and start to build up. So is it the fact that you're holding on to a lot more LDL or higher LDL levels because your liver is toxic raising your CRP levels, which alters your blood vessels, which then creates macrophage formation of these foam cells. And this is why a recent study just came out, and this was on big time news across the country, National Institute of Health, again studied almost 28,000. So here is a picture of the study, women's heart disease risk could be predicted up to 30 years in advance with one blood test. I'm thankful that this is getting news, but I made this video so you can share it with friends and loved ones to help to understand the one number, very simple action step at the end of this video that you can look at. Now this study looked at almost 28,000 women, initially healthy women, followed them for 30 years. And the number one predictor of heart attacks, cardiovascular disease, strokes, or death from a cardiac scenario, CRP, a number that needs to go into every physical and every doctor visit that you're getting blood work moving forward. Now, if you're going to test for LDL particle sizes, I recommend you also request an NMR. And so this will test your LDL, but it will show you, do you have big ones or do you have small ones? That's the big thing that we want to know. But the number one test is CRP. Now, there's an important differentiator when you are looking at CRP, what type you should get. I would request a high sensitivity CRP. If your doctor is able to order this, that is the type of test that will get much more granular on its information that it gives you and its sensitivity. Now, when the test comes back, typically we want to see this below 10. If you're above 10, it's time to get moving. I'm going to give you a next step of what to do if it is above. Now, what I like to see personally, when I saw mine, it was below one. 
It was undetectable. It actually got flagged abnormal because it was so low. That's a good thing. My liver is not producing any C-reactive protein. So lower than 10 is a good starting point. Closer to zero is where we wanna get it. I see a lot of blood tests of people within the one to three range. So that's not like alarming, but if you're in your 40s or your 50s and you have a number that is saying one or two or three or four, it's above that zero to one range. What are you way more susceptible, two to three times more likely to have 30 years from now? That's the type of healthcare that I really like because that's truly preventative, my friends. And when people are broadcasting this study right here across major news networks, this is one we got to pay attention to because it lies at the key that my dad found out is the key for all heart-related conditions and nearly all disease, which is inflammation. And you now have at your fingertips a test for a few dollars that can test your liver's ability and how much your liver is producing Reducing inflammation, that liver lies the key to so many health issues, which is exactly why one of my most popular pieces of content that I've ever made, which is fixing your liver in 14 days by drinking and doing this one thing with a rock solid study behind it, has been viewed by millions of people because it works. And I watch person after person after person follow my liver protocol for healing your liver. In a matter of 14 days, you can reduce reduce the inflammation here by up to 46%, which makes me wonder what, how you could impact your C-reactive protein in just two weeks, let alone what starts to happen here. Now you're gonna to wanna to give it time, but if you were to implement a simple eating plan, a simple drink, and I would encourage to get nutrients like artichoke, and black radish, and some of these nutrients that the liver really loves, lemon, to flush it out. Focus here, my friends, to change a number that could change the next 30 years of what these things look like for you. That was powerful. I wanted to share it. Please pass this forward to people that maybe we could reach them now before they're 80 and suffering and literally drowning in their own fluid because their heart is simply not working. Because you shared a piece of information with a husband or a brother or a sister or a friend that allowed them to start taking care of one of the main filters that they have and they don't have to suffer what my family and a lot of your families have already suffered. So share this one forward. Check out the liver health video below to begin your journey on experiencing real health by cleansing your ultimate cleanser.